Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Middle Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look at a, uh, a very exciting game between Minich, one of my favourite engines uh, out of the top ones, and then against Ethereal, also another favourite, in the TCC Cup 12 quarter-final. So um, this opening was reached after yeah, some sort of uh, amorphous, well, they call it Queen's Fianchetto defense, Nimzovich defense. I'm not really sure about that. Um, e4, b6, knight c3, bishop b7, d4, e6, bishop d3, knight f6, knight g2, knight c6. Who knows? But it, it ended up looking a little bit like um, a hippopotamus. Um, and, uh, well, I actually thought that, um, uh, that white uh, stood very, very well here. Um, in actual fact, uh, the engines didn't really seem to, uh, to think so, but white does have dangerous attacking chances. I mean, white's got a, a good-looking uh, pawn centre here. Um, these pawns, are, they're a little bit ahead of the king somehow. I mean, there's some, uh, some little loose feeling of squares here, but, uh, well, they certainly gain space, and uh, white's certainly able to start uh, gaining even more space. I suppose what black has got is uh, some nice pressure against the uh, the center, possibility of more, maybe even a possibility of a break, just to uh, to break open the king side and really expose that loose space. And I guess also after this last move, b6 to b5, also a possible nice uh, development square for the knight as well. So yeah, chances for both. I'd, I'd rather be white, but um, uh, but I think even if, if I was black, I'd be thinking, oh, you know, nice chances, uh, you know, chances for all three results basically. So Minich played um, h5, um, pretty bold, and now an amazing move. I mean, you really do have to be an engine to uh, to play this. I remember Al um, Stockfish 8 did this against Alpha Zero, and um, yeah, you know, you try to explain it to a human audience, you know, that's not used to, uh, to engines, and uh, yeah, just say, well, you know, this is what engines do, very concrete. But um, yeah, I mean... Um, um, Ethereal presumably doesn't want, um, you know, white playing h6, just really uh, uh, cramping down on that king side, and so uh, decides to take on here. And of course, the point is, if something like g takes h5, we've got stuff like uh, like f5 coming in. So, for example, uh, this was a game Stockfish against Dragon, one of my games. King h8, king h2, f5, in we go. e5, rook g8, rook g1, knight takes e5, attack, <laughs> d takes e5. Knight d5. I mean, all sorts of things are uh, are threatened here. You know, very very dangerous. Look at all those uh, uh, look at all those intercrossing patterns. Really. So um, yeah, very very dangerous for uh, for White that one. But um, Minich had a, a different idea here, which was to play the move Knight f4, and after H takes g4, then Knight h5. So instead of having uh, a pawn on h5, we've got a Knight on h5. And this is obviously. Uh, quite unpleasant for um, uh, for black. I mean, we've got threats of knight g7, bishop h6, for example. Uh, bishop h6 immediately is another idea. And, well, this knight can come round uh, g4 into h6. A lot happening around the um, uh, the black king side. Um, so black just destroys, decides to strike back with um, with f5. It's quite interesting, actually, because the um, the one move that, um, that the engines will not consider is to uh, to take on g7 and go bishop h6 and pick up the exchange. Um, I think the you know the feeling there is that um, you know um, if you just pick up the exchange, the the white king is um, is weak. Um, yeah, the centre uh, is under pressure, and um, um, you've actually got no attacking chances against the king. I mean, despite that, I would um, yeah, it would kind of be the move that I look at most seriously. I mean, I guess I'm like king g8 because. Uh, if queen g5, we can go knight g6. Um, and then something like bishop f8. And yeah, I'm not really sure. Maybe knight f8 simply to threaten queen takes d4. You've got two pawns. And um, yeah, you know, the the white king is uh, is a little weak. But still, it doesn't look so bad to me. But uh, the engines would just not touch that. Quite amazing. Um, what uh, Minich did was play uh, bishop h6, which is, uh, yeah, even more forceful. We're um, uh, keeping the knight as an attacking piece close to the king and, um, well, also threatening something like bishop f8. So um, Ethereal plays quite an amazing move <coughs> to me. Queen h6 and rook f7. So just um, covering the uh, the threat on g7 in that way and, um, yeah, you know, preparing maybe to play queen f8 or knight f8, just defend the e6 pawn. 
Also, you notice now that uh, this move b6 to b5 that black played, um, I said to create an outpost on uh, c4. Well, it also stops the bishop from coming into c4 and attacking that e6 pawn. And, uh, well, Ethereal uh, Minich rather decides that it really wants that and goes bishop b1 with the idea of going bishop a2. But um, Ethereal played king h8, queen takes e6, and now, well, there are a number of moves for black. Queen e8 was very popular with my engine games, which, to be honest, I can understand. But um, Ethereal just played the move rook f8, you know, cool, just uh, uh, no worries, you know, uh, there's maybe some threats on g7, there could be some threats along the long diagonal, all of that, but no problems, just uh, nice and cool, rook goes back to f8. Yeah, a crazy position. How are you going to do this? Well, I mean, uh, to be honest, queen h6 looked pretty tempting because after rook f7, there's uh, bishop a2 making use of this uh, maneuver to uh, chase away the rook from f7. But um, yeah, you've got this move for knight g8 just to chase the queen away. And then you go back to f8 and the engines are claiming that this is going to be okay because there's some counterplay coming in after bishop b6 or something. We go queen h4. So, um, yeah, the engines were, 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 were sort of saying this was perfectly fine. Nothing better for white than to play queen h2 and swap off queens when, well, I mean, uh, you know, something like this should be, uh, should be sort of okay for, um, for black. So, um, Minich played the move uh, d5, which is uh, pretty nice. I mean, what it's doing, it's opening up the, uh, the long diagonal. Your queen can't get there yet, but, well, in the future, maybe, and uh, that could be pretty unpleasant. So um, how on earth can black make counterplay? Well, the key thing for black, of course, is to get the queen active. If the queen could get active either along this diagonal or from this square somehow, then, um, yeah, there would be a lot of chances here. And so uh, ethereal, well, spots the downside of this move d4 to d5. It weakens control of the e5 square. So that's where white goes. That's where black goes, rather. Knight g6, e takes f5, and knight g5. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, always with these games, with uh, very sharp games with engines, you know, you have always the sensation that the game's always turning around. I mean, a couple of moves ago, I thought white looked completely winning. Now, if you showed me this position, I'd rather be black. You know, I like uh, the knight on here. It's got ideas of knight f3, and with the queen coming to h4, also very dangerous. So queen h6, rook f7, and now this move queen f4, which is quite uh, quite interesting in actual fact. So, I mean, just giving up that threat, kind of looking to um, uh, to uh, um, kind of consolidate, I suppose. You know, we're, we're just trying to absorb this knight f3 check uh, threat. Um, we've given, uh, we give the knight on, um, on h5 um, a square to retreat to, to g3 if, uh, if necessary. And we're just basically trying to hold the position. It's, uh, but it's, it feels like a bit of a turnaround. There was also king g2 uh, here when g3, king takes g3, queen c7 was uh, uh, the subject of some, uh, some crazy games here. I mean, after queen c7, we've got a knight discovered uh, attack and also the rooks coming to g8. And well, that's exactly what happened. Rook c1, rook g8, king h3, bishop d5. Um, lovely little idea of rook c7. We've got bishop g2, king there, and knight f3 check. So, um, and then rook g1 played. And, um, well, the engines thought that this was about even. I mean, it's a total mess, of course. But um, it looks like uh, like black's kind of holding, uh, holding its own, but very, very complicated. So after queen f4, knight f3 check played, king g2, and knight b6. And you can really see what um, what black's building up here. I mean, you want to take the uh, uh, the pawn on d5, attack the queen, and then this bishop is going to be uh, activated, and, uh, well, there's going to be a massive discovered uh, check somehow. Now, the beautiful thing is that, um, is that um, uh, Minich just completely ignores it. So he goes knight takes g4, knight takes d5, and then queen f3. And the point is, of course, that, um, uh, yeah, if you go something like knight f4 check, well, I'll, I'll take back with a knight, most likely. Um, uh, bishop takes, uh, king takes, and I've got, um, uh, yeah, three minor pieces for the queen and also some pretty dangerous threats against the king. I mean, there's, uh, you know, plenty of ideas in there and, uh, yeah, plenty of hope this is going to work out very, very well. But um, Ethereal wasn't finished. Ethereal played queen h4 and... Um, yeah, you know, the idea is that um, we're going to come in with um, with rook g8, hit this knight on uh, on g4. I think that was the answer. I seem to remember that after rook d5, rook g8 was the answer. You just leave this pin on here and then hit the, uh, the knight on g4. So very, very dangerous all round here. 
So, uh, what does um, uh, Minich do? Rook h1, chasing the queen. And now a fantastic move from uh, from Ethereal. Knight f4 check, in we go. Feels decisive. I think, you know, in a human game, you might even, out of shock, just resign here. You know, the idea is, obviously, the bishop's uh, attacking the queen. Pin to the king, so uh, you can't go anything like queen f4. And knight f4 just allows queen g4 check, completely winning. But um, white has, well, white has two moves, actually, even in this position. And uh, Minich chose one of them, and that's just the move king f1. So, I mean, what we're doing, we're uh, leaving the, um, uh, the queen attacked. We're getting out of check. And, um, well, th this, these knights are also attacked. So, for example, if you went something like um, uh, bishop takes f3, which is what happened in the game, I go rook h4. And if you go bishop takes d1 here, then I can just go knight f4. And I've got two pieces for the rook. I'm very, very happy. But there's this incredible little uh, uh, move, knight takes h5. And, uh, well, if rook h5, well, we've got many things, but bishop g4 forking both rooks is really sweet. I, I love, love those tactics. So um, rook h5, not possible, but don't we have knight e5 forking the bishop and the rook? We do indeed, but after bishop d1, knight f7, king g7, well, we're attacking the knight. The bishop is defending this knight. And after knight d6, knight f6, believe it or not, we've ended up in the position with equal material after all that amazing action. So, um, well, the engines uh, continued, of course, a little bit. Felt that white was um, maybe a little bit better here, but it's nothing much at all. Knight e4, a5, takes, takes, bishop d3, takes, takes, bishop c4, takes, takes. And uh, that is basically that, just a draw. Um, quite an amazing middle game there. I really, really enjoyed that, I have to say. Um, it was, um, I mean, this attack with um, uh, with h5, g takes h5, knight f4. It's a little bit shogi-like, actually, that you, um, you know, you do attacks just to try and uh, draw up some pawns forward so that you can install pieces there. And uh, yeah, this whole idea of giving up the pawns on h5 and g4 just to get a knight to h5 is, is really, really cool. I do like that very much. And um, yeah, I mean the uh, the other thing that I uh, I really love, of course, is this um, uh, this tactic: uh, Rook H1 attacking the Queen, Knight F4, King F1. You know, and uh, and also Black's lead up uh, play to that. You know, really, really impressive. It's uh, yeah, I mean it's it's always really cool to look at the games, not just of uh, Stockfish and Leela, um, but also to have a look at the games of other engines because there's so many good ones. And uh, yeah, I mean engines like Minich and Ethereal are just really, really strong. Uh, Revenge as well is another one, you know, and just um, play beautiful chess. You know, really worth uh, looking at. Well, I mean if you were following uh, this channel, then the game uh, from Eki Satan against uh, Stoflace was amazing, right? You know, so uh, yeah, really great chess all over the place. So there we are. Hope you liked that. Uh, this slightly shorter video. Um, if you liked it, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new books, Silicon Road to uh, Chess Improvement, and also uh, Reengineering the Chess Classics. And uh, well, I'm the Forward Chess Author of the Month at the moment. So there's masses of very good deals on Forward Chess uh, books. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it is a very good way to uh, to read chess. I'm kind of a traditionalist with books, I've always felt, but uh, forward chess, I make an exception for because I really do love it. So there we are. Hope you enjoy that. And uh, well, otherwise, see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.